Hello and welcome to this installation video for Bannerlord Europe 1100. My name is Fatrod, aka Rodimus, and I'm the mod author for Europe 1100. This is the first in what I hope will be a series of videos covering everything from installation instructions to mod features and maybe even some playthroughs. First off, we're going to cover uh, how to install the mod through Steam, and then secondly, how to do it manually from Nexus mods. So, let's get into it. So, the mod is available in two places. One is Nexus mods, and the other is through the Steam Workshop. Now, if you're wondering why you should use one version over the other, there's two key differences. The first is that Steam is very easy to install. All you need to do is subscribe to the various mod and sub mods, um, and you don't have to uh, go into the folders at all. However, the Steam versions will also update automatically. Once you are subscribed to a mod, um, if that mod gets updated, the updates will automatically come through. That is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it'll always be up to date, but it's bad because not all mods will be updated at the same time. For example, if an update comes out for the Europe map, uh, it will take me anywhere from a day to a week or even a couple of weeks to then update Europe 1100. Usually we're pretty good. The last few updates we've actually brought out the same day, but that won't always be the case. So what happens then is your Europe map will be on the latest version, um, Europe 1100, has not yet been updated, when you launch your game, it's not going to work. Getting the mods from Nexus, on the other hand, gives you complete manual control over all versions of your files. So even though you have to download them manually and place them into the Bannerlord modules folder, um, it does mean that the game will not break uh, due to any sort of automatic updates. So the first thing to do is make sure you are on the correct version of Bannerlord, which at the time of this video is 1.1.5. So if you head into Properties uh, and then over to Betas, you'll note that we are not subscribed to any beta. Uh, the current beta is version 1.2. The Europe map itself does not support 1.2, and as a sub-mod of Europe map, Europe 1100 needs to follow the same version. So all you need to do is make sure you are not subscribed to a beta and you should be on the latest version of Bannerlord. Next thing you want to do is head into the uh, workshop for Bannerlord from your library. You can do a quick search for Europe 1100. And then you can see the first result here, Europe 1100 by Rodimus. Click on that. Now, Installing the mod is pretty simple. All you need to do is hit subscribe, followed by subscribing to these other required mods down here on the right. First of those is Harmony, Europe, Lemmy Project, which is the Europe map itself, and then optional but highly recommended Banner, uh, banner Color Persistence, uh, which will ensure that all of the uh, clan banners will render correctly. So, all you need to do is hit subscribe here. It's notifying us that we also need to get these additional ones, which we'll do in a moment, and hit continue. Then head down to Harmony, and we'll get that one next. Now, you will notice there is a message here um, noting that the Europe map requires Harmony 2.3, which is not the Steam version. Um, and you actually need to get that manually from Nexus, which is linked here. However, at the time of this video, um, the mod has actually been working for myself and several other users um, with version 2.2 from Steam. So there's no harm in giving this a try. Um, all you need to do is click on the um, Harmony link here and subscribe to that version as well. Once that's complete, do the same thing for both the Europe map. You can see I'm already subscribed and banner color persistence and we're subscribed to that too. Once you've done that, um, that has now downloaded all of the necessary mods, or uh, at least it will be once it's finished downloading down the bottom here. 
Um, there's one final step, um, which is editing the config file for banner color persistence, um, which we can get to from within our Steam library. So if we go back to our banner lord entry in the library here, under manage, we'll go to browse local files. So that has opened up our banner lord folder. We're going to go back two steps to Steam apps. Uh, you can then see the workshop folder. This is where all of our subscribed items from the workshop will go. Um, and then within content, you'll see one or more folders. I think these correspond to the game. And then within those, several other um, numbered folders. And these actually correlate to uh, each of the various mods. What you can do here within this folder to make this easy is just do a search for config.json. That is the config file for banner color persistence. And that has pulled up a single result. We'll open that up. So this is the config file for banner color persistence. We only need to make one simple change here, which is line two. By default, this is false. We just need to change that to true. Once that's done, hit save and you're good to go. So at that point, um, you're ready to hit play and fire up Bannerlord. That will then open up the launcher. If you uh, hit the mods screen, you should see the mods that we've downloaded. Um, and the last thing we need to do is ensure that they are enabled, which we do by ticking this button on the left and then putting them in the correct load order. Whenever you download mods for Bannerlord, there will probably be a load order. Uh, and that means that on this list, the mod itself needs to be um, in the right position. If a mod requires something from another mod, which in our case, Europe 1100 requires the map itself from the Europe map, then our mod needs to be below the one in question. I've got banner color persistence last, but it actually doesn't matter. That one can be anywhere. Um, now, we'll cover submods in another video, but if you do choose to use any other mods, I would suggest you put them above the Europe map and always have Europe 1100 last. The one exception to that is Eric's, uh, Eric's troops, but we'll talk about that um, in another video. So, once we've got these enabled and in the right position, we're ready to hit play. Now, you will get this notification quite often. Um, don't worry, it doesn't mean anything. Um, this is just because uh, some of the other mods, the Europe map and banner color persistence, their config file has not been updated to say that they are compatible with the latest version of Bannerlord. Don't worry, doesn't mean anything. All right, now if everything's worked correctly, you should see the uh, Bannerlord Europe 1100 logo. Um, and we're ready to start our game. If you are seeing broken textures here, purple and black textures, uh, that is a known issue with the Steam version. Um, and in order to correct that, you will need to switch to the Nexus version. But it's not critical, um, you can continue. Now note that this mod is sandbox only. Um, do not hit campaign or custom battle because it will crash. Um, you can get pretty far into a campaign, but it is not designed for it. Um, so yeah, just, just go with Sandbox. Now the initial load can be a little bit slow the first time you start a game. That's because right now Bannerlord is merging together um, all of the different XML files and content, but it only does that on the first, uh, the first load of the game. If you load up a save game in the future, it will be much faster. And skip the video, that will be removed in a future update. And then we are ready to select our culture. So if you scroll down the list, you'll notice we do have quite a few to choose from, more getting added with every release. I won't cover these off in detail now. We'll just go with some default settings. And there we go. Now, if you have installed banner color persistence correctly and edited the config file, this is what your banners should look like. Um, you know, lovely colors matching exactly um, what the original banners look like. If you've done it incorrectly, you're gonna see some flat colors. For example, the Berber cultures will be completely black. If that's the case, you need to go and edit that config.json file again. But at this point, you are ready to go.
Okay, so the second way to install the mod is to do it manually through Nexus Mods, and the link to this is in the description. Once you come to the mod page, um, you can read through the requirements description if you like, otherwise skip straight to files um, and you can download the mod. Once you hit manual, um, it will also pop up the other dependencies. Um, just a note on mod managers and uh, third-party installers or launchers, simply do not use them. Do not use the Nexus launcher, do not use the Voxel launcher, um, because they remove dependencies and they will break the mod. Um, nothing I can do about it for now, um, just do everything manually. So we're going to hit manual download, it's going to tell us we need our other dependencies. You can go ahead and open those up in a new tab, because you're going to have to download those too. Go ahead and hit download, um, and we hit the download button. Now it's not a very big file, so that'll download pretty quickly. Um, you can then go and get the other required mods. So the first one is Harmony, um, very important. Harmony is required for just about every mod um, because it allows the use of third-party DLL files. Um, you can grab the latest version, 2.3. The actual Europe map itself, um, you're also going to grab the latest version here. Uh, and then the final one, Banner Color Persistence. Um, there is two current versions. 1.4.6 is for the beta. You do not want that. You want 1.4.5. Um, go ahead and download that as well. I'm not going to bother downloading everything for now. I'll just use two as an example. So once those files have been downloaded, um, you go into your downloads folder and open them up in uh, your uh, unzip tool of your choice. So I'll start off with Europe 1100. Here is the folder, and this is going to be extracted into my Bannerlord Modules folder. Now, if you want to double check what that location is, within my Steam Library, Steam Apps, Mountain Blade, and then there is a Modules folder, which you can see here. Um, and you will actually see some existing things in there, such as Custom Battle, Native, Sandbox, um, because Bannerlord treats the vanilla game options the same way. They're modules as well. So we go ahead and hit OK. Um, I've already got it on there, so I will not override that. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for our other downloads. So I'll do that with banner color persistence as well. So noting you do need to do this with both Harmony and with um, the Europe map. Okay, once that's done, um, if we go to our modules folder within Bannerlord, we should see those mods that we've um, downloaded and installed. Now, one additional step we need to do is update the config file for Banner Color Persistence. This is actually easier on the Nexus version than for Steam because it's much easier to find the folder. We go into our Banner Color Persistence folder, into bin, into shipping client, and then we open up the config.json file. Same as what we do in the Steam version, we just change this second line value to true, save that, and we're good to go. At this point, we can launch up our game and we should, once again, see the mods available in our mod folder. Here's Harmony, Europe Map, Europe 1100, and Banner Color Persistence. Even though I didn't have um, Europe Map and Harmony in my mods folder, I'm still subscribed to them in Steam. You can actually mix and match mods. You can use some from Steam and some from Nexus. Um, just make sure you don't do both at the same time. For example, if you've installed Nexus version of Europe 1100 and you are subscribed on Steam, they're going to conflict and it's going to crash. So just make sure you only have one version of the module. And with that, we hit play and we can get started. The other thing to be aware of, uh, if it is your first time running the mod, do not use any other sub mods or game mods. The reason being that a lot of them will not be compatible. The way Europe 1100 is created, all of the vanilla content is removed. And if any other mod tries to access that content, your game is going to crash. 
We often get people on Discord asking for help and they have a list of 10, 20, 30 different mods enabled and it's simply never going to work. So once again, if it's your first time running the mod, just use the basics. Harmony, Europe Map, Europe 1100 and Banner Color Persistence. Once that's working, you can then start to add in new mods one at a time. So with that, you're ready to start enjoying the mod. If you're still having problems, feel free to head over to our Discord channel um, and post in the bug reporting section. Someone will be able to give you a hand. But if you follow the steps, everything should be working correctly.